Hey everyone, Austin here. In this video, I'd like to explain what some of these numbers mean when referring to internet speeds like upload and download, megabit versus megabyte, and more, so that you understand what you're getting from your internet service provider, or ISP for short, and what you should look out for. Your internet speed and reliability is based on many factors. Of course, it all starts with the ISP and how good their internet systems are, how good the cable is that's going to your house, how good your equipment is in the house, like your router they provided, and also the following things. The numbers that the ISP typically shows you is in megabits. It may also show as MBPS with a lowercase b. The issue with this is that it doesn't give you the complete picture. When you download a file, it is typically shown in megabytes, or MBPS with a capital M and a capital B. The number is good to know when downloading to make sure that you're getting what you pay for. For example, if your ISP says they can sell you the speed of 50 megabits per second download and 10 megabits per second upload, which is how they typically show it or talk about it. If you do the math, you take that number and divide it by eight to get the megabytes per second. So for 50 megabits per second, your download speed should be around six megabytes per second. The reasoning for this is a little technical, so I'm not going to go into that at this time, but it's good to have this understanding because they are used interchangeably. So another factor is the number of people that are currently using the same internet connection in the house. That can have a huge impact on how good and consistent your internet is. If you have four people in the house and someone's playing an online game, someone else is downloading a file and others are streaming Netflix, then a decent connection is needed or everyone will have issues with slowness like a video playing and then loading or buffering every so often, or downloads going really slow. Another factor is the distance and the amount of solid objects, like walls between you and the router, have a huge impact on your speed and reliability. I go into this more in another video that I'll link in the description. Wi-Fi is great, but using a network cable into a laptop or desktop will normally give you the best performance. So. Whenever possible, go wired instead of wireless. So I wanted to go into a little bit more of the differences between upload and download speeds. For example, if you're downloading a file from the internet, like a program or a song, a video, or you're streaming Netflix or pretty much any other streaming service, these are all using your download speed. On the other hand, if you're uploading videos to YouTube, that you made, adding attachments to your emails or backing up your computer or phone or tablet to the cloud, that is considered upload. Typically, in most circumstances, when you pay for internet services, your download will be much faster than your upload since in most cases, you're downloading or streaming. If you're on a Zoom call, FaceTime video call or other type of video call, then you are uploading your video and audio to the others in the call and downloading their video and audio to your device. In this example, you're using both upload and download at the same time. The nice thing about a lot of these streaming and video conferencing services is that they do tell you the minimum and sometimes the recommended internet speeds you need in order for it to work at its best. Just keep in mind that this information is referring to only one person using the internet and no one else. So if you wanna see how good your internet speed is, there are websites like speedtest.net that you can run from your laptop, desktop, smartphone, tablet, or any other internet enabled device. This will run a quick test and let you know what your upload and download speed is. But I do recommend running this when no one else in the house is using the internet so you get the most accurate results. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. There's a lot more to go into, like types of internet, router settings, internal home network speeds, and more that I will talk about in future videos. 
So if you're interested in a little more advanced understanding, make sure to subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss those future videos. And thanks for watching. Bye.